Welcome back to the channel. And today I have a box from Sterling by Music Man. So let's see what's inside. This is something I am very excited about. And I know that you've probably already read the description and know that this is in fact the Sterling version of the St. Vincent signature guitar. And I am very, very excited to try it out. It's one I have uh, admired for a long time, the original version and this new updated version. So let's see. Ah, and I was wondering if it was the version that came with the gig bag. And it does. See, I have seen this guitar listed at two different prices. One I think is $829, the other $779. And I can't tell the difference in the guitars, but I think one comes with a gig bag and one doesn't. This was listed as a B stock. Let's see if it actually is. This is a very nice gig bag. So, oh, look at this. Wow, this is a beautiful guitar. So, this is the, honestly, I'm going to have to look to remember exactly what they call this color. Uh, I think it might be velveteen. Uh, if that's not correct, I'll put it up on the screen right now. But, oh, this is beautiful. So, those of you uh, who are familiar with St. Vincent know that she is, uh, her real name's Annie Clark, and she is an amazing guitarist. She is, uh, I'm not saying she's quite on their level, but uh, Hendrixian, Prinzian in her playing. Uh, she is just absolutely uh, an amazing guitar player and an amazing artist. She is one of those uh, artist who is so multi-talented, uh, she just makes the rest of us pale in comparison. So I'm so pleased to try this guitar out. She's uh, had a couple different versions out, and of course there's the full-fledged Music Man version, uh, which is about $3,100. This one retails with the gig bag, I think, for $829. I think it was $675 that I paid for this. Uh, 779 for the version without a gig bag. And uh, I've been admiring this guitar and the original version for a long time. And I thought now is the perfect time uh, to try one out because another artist I love, uh, Olivia Rodrigo, has been playing a custom version of the full-fledged Music Man version on her new Guts World Tour. That's a just absolutely beautiful guitar. And though Olivia is not a guitar player like uh, Annie Clark is, she can actually hold her own with some rhythm playing. And uh, I think she's an amazing artist, too. Uh, she's a pop singer, but she writes her own songs, has a little bit more edge to her, and is a great songwriter. So it was I really uh, was pleased to see her rocking this guitar in purple. Prince would be proud of that uh, on tour. So... This is, again, just an, an initial unboxing. I'm going to go over it in great detail later in this video. And uh, I failed to say it before, uh, this is March of 2024. It is International Women's Month, and I'm hoping this video will be releasing on March 8th, International Women's Day. Now, I thought that would be a great uh, way for me to do something in my own small way to honor a couple of my favorite female artists. So... I'm going to go over just really quick what I'm seeing out of the box. This is a very comfortable shape. I mean, it's extremely light. I'll get uh, weight later in the video. Uh, the contours are just perfect. One thing, I'm someone who always admires explorers, but can never play one because I know that uh, they get in the way of everyone's arm, but it seems like for me in particular, like exactly how I like to hold my arm, I just cannot play and explore. This has a very nice contour right there where you might be able to see it. The uh, goes back towards the body and really allows you to hold it comfortably. Man, this is just an amazing neck. This is a roasted maple neck. Look at that great figure and it feels fantastic. Rosewood fingerboard, I believe. Looks like rosewood. In fact, I'm positive that's rosewood. Uh, the frets are just perfect out of the box. This is the first Sterling I've ever owned. Um, 
locking tuners. Got the two by four there. Have these uh, really neat diamond shaped knobs. Switch feels good. I believe the original version, the pit guard covered both sides. It's streamlined here. I actually think it looks better. It came in a blue color, which is obviously one of my favorite colors if you've seen some of my blue Telecasters and Stratocasters in the past. But uh, man, this is this feels really high. If you just handed me this and I didn't know any better, you could convince me just on first impression it was a $3,100 version. Uh, of course, I'll go over in more detail. We have gold foil mini humbuckers. I'm very eager to try that out. And I don't think I've ever had a guitar with this feature before, but I'm very pleased to have one here with the little spindle truss rod adjustment down here. It should make it very easy. Uh, look in the gig bag for the trim arm. Get it out here in a minute. It also has the nice little lip here where you can do a nice little touch there without having to really engage the armor if you don't want to use the arm. Take a look at the back. Standard Strat style. Back plate. I mean, the joint here looks good, the bolt-on joint like that plate. Again, I'll go over this in more detail. Made in Indonesia. Love these sort of purloid, ivory-esque, but not obviously real ivory. Uh, feel like plastic buttons. Man, just out of the box, I am extremely impressed by this guitar. I am extremely excited to plug it in and give it a try. So uh, what we'll do now is uh, get some sound samples and take a closer look. Okay, got the trim arm in, one of the high quality push in ones, stays in place well. Now we are plugged into a Marshall DSL-1 on the Classic Game Channel, EQ's on about five, going into a Black Star 2x12 cab, mic with an SM57, start the bridge pickup. Very nice, very bright. Uh, let's go to the second position here, which I believe is, I think this switch is the same as a Strat. If I'm wrong, you'll see it at the bottom of the screen now and I'll correct it later, but I'm pretty sure this five-way switch is the same as a Strat. So this is the bridge in the middle. Middle position. sounds now going to the fourth position <laughs> Bridge. 
second position. And the fifth position. Sixty cycle hum demo this guitar and talked about uh, the sounds and how the in-between positions have a nice for an electric acoustic like nice strummy sound and how bright the single pickup positions are and I agree with that these are some really really great sounds like just do some this is the uh, second position the bridge in the middle <laughs> classic rock band, didn't use a heavy gain, you want a good Telecaster alternative, did a lot of strumming, I think you could get this guitar, put it in the fourth position, and just do this till the end of time. Bridge, get that bright sound. traditional Telecaster bridge pickup. And now, the neck again. keep going on and on can't stop playing and i haven't tried out the knobs yet so let's do the uh give a i love these at least stylistically the way they look let's just do a good uh, swell here mm, decent uh give it a three out of five say now the uh tone all the way down about five, about seven. The tone I really like. The volume, this is zero. Doesn't do a lot till about five. 
maybe more like six or seven, but I'm not a big volume knob uh, rider on things like that. And I'd probably use a Strat if I was doing swells or something like that or a Tele. But uh, the tone, especially since these pickups are bright, because let's turn that down to about seven and try it on the bridge pickup, just some. 10. Takes us a little bit of the edge off. So before we get some uh, higher gain sounds, let's take a look at this in close detail and take a look inside too. Okay, let's look at the Sterling by Music Man St. Vincent Goldie model in a little more detail. First, the color is called Velveteen. It's a little bit darker in person than in pictures, uh, which I like. It looks very nice. The other color it's available in is called Cashmere. It's basically the color of a Gibson Les Paul 57 gold top, roughly, in pictures at least. The body is made out of Naito. Uh, that's a more affordable wood, but again, feels great uh, to the body. Feels very resonant. I believe that one difference between this and the more expensive uh, full-fledged Music Man model is that's an Okum body, I believe. So we have these uh, triangular knobs, which look great. And I think the points help you identify where you are better. Another area where some cost is saved is that this is a regular Strat-style traditional trim, two-post. The Music Man has a slightly more advanced uh, trim system, but this one's great and it has the great and of course you love this coming from the world of mini strats Just push in Trim arm stays in place. Well really like it a lot uh, The pickups are sterling gold foils uh, The gold foil parts generally usually just cosmetic. I'm pretty confident. These are just standard mini humbuckers but They sound really good These are not the same ones from what I understand is are in the more expensive model which again is $30.99, where this with the gig bag is $8.29.99, and without is $7.79.99. I get the impression they're just, it's not a choice. I think they're just now starting to ship without a gig bag. I might be wrong about that, though. That's a sort of the inference I draw. Uh, of course, the little uh, half pick guard, the original model, uh, had it on this side in between, too. I actually think this looks better. Uh, these inlays are beautiful. These are the St. Vincent inlays. Of course, have the truss rod adjustment there. Uh, the fret work is great on this. Nickel frets, not stainless steel, which I actually think I might prefer. Uh, the fret ends to get a five out of five and the Phil McKnight test. I mean, they're fantastic. 12 inch radius. This is real rosewood, not Indian laurel. Uh, the nut is a polyphylene sulfite something. It's a synthetic nut, but it seems fine. It seems to be very well cut, as you can see. Uh, the headstock, the Sterling by Music Man logo, two on the top, four on the bottom tuners. Beautiful, wonderful. If you're a St. Vincent fan like me, recognize those, uh, that logo there, those three symbols. And I mean, just a very high quality guitar. Another thing, this is not a negative. This is just the difference between this and a true premium instrument. The fret board is not rolled very much. I want to say they're sharp, but uh, it reminds me a bit of my PRS SE Swamp Ash Special. Nothing at all wrong with it, but these are not very rolled at all, which is fine. That's just something that, you know, on a more premium instrument, you'd probably get. As Phil McKnight says, uh, it's the time more than the parts that usually dictate the cost, and that's another time thing. That's the difference between a more affordable guitar and more and more affordable guitar and a more expensive guitar. So let's take a look at the back. First, I took the back plate off so we can look inside. It is does have some shielding there. Take out the trim arm here. Sorry to be moving the camera around. I'm doing this one-handed. So you can see very neat. Uh, the soldering job looks very good. We have the small alpha pots, which you get nothing wrong with that. The standard PCB board switch, which feels fine. Uh, shielding paint, so you can't really see the wood. One thing I will say, I really like this heel joint. This is a great heel joint. Now this cut doesn't really uh, give you any 
more access because of the way it is, but this is very rounded, very nice. And just look at this roasted maple neck. That is beautiful. Beautiful grain made in Indonesia. As you can see, locking tuners, which is, I think, fantastic at this price point. I mean, let's take a little closer look there. And then those buttons are, I think, very attractive. I mean, overall, it's just a fantastic guitar. So now that we've, oh, and I do like this neck plate and the serial numbers on the plate, uh, very well shaped. Five bolt, that's something else uh, to note. And then of course the strap buttons are there. I actually have a very special strap in mind for this guitar, but I don't have it yet. So we'll be going strapless uh, for this video. But uh, now that we've taken a look inside, let's get some more sounds. Okay, back for more sounds. I have the MXR Custom Shop Timmy on. Everything is on seven except for the volume, which is on about four. Start with the bridge pickup. That is just such an amazing sound. That's that's all you need right there. You can just play that all day. And as I'm holding that sustained note, I can feel the neck resonate. I mean, it's a very resonant instrument. Let's go to the uh, second position here. one thing uh, I'd love to note a little bit there the action is pretty high on this so if you like low action you'll probably need to adjust it it's on the high end of what I would think is acceptable uh, coming out of the box but of course that's an easy adjustment especially with the uh, truss rod spindle right there so now go to the middle position play something from a, a telly sound that I love <laughs> Turn the tone down some here and see what it sounds like. Now full blast. Just some great sounds. So now I think this guitar is begging for some fuzz. So let's see what it does with that. Kicked on the Behringer SF1 Super Fuzz, starting with the bridge pickup.
Yep, that'll do. Now going to the second position. gig bag very well padded in here nice faux leather handle let's see what's inside here I've not opened it yet and we have the Allen wrenches and the trim arm so pretty straightforward but very nice so final thoughts this is a fantastic guitar. Not just for the money, just period. It's one of those guitars that when you play it, even someone like me who has way too many guitars and loves trying out and playing new ones, uh, thinks to themselves, do I really need any more than one guitar? Uh, this really can do it all. Heavier sounds, brighter sounds. Uh, these mini humbuckers are great. Uh, about the only thing I think it couldn't do would be full-on super heavy metal. I don't think that these have quite enough oomph for that. But for traditional sounds, uh, I think they're fantastic. They have a lot of bite, uh, a little more thickness than a single coil. It's uh, pretty much perfect, in my opinion. Uh, the quality is tremendous. I have found no quality control issues. The frets, very highly polished. Fred is dressed well. Uh, action's a little high, but it's intonated pretty well. Uh, and the action's not ridiculously high, as I said earlier. Uh, it's a great value, with or without the gig bag, which is a nice gig bag, but uh, I think it'd be fine without it. Uh, I weighed it. It is exactly six pounds. I even noticed on the tracking, uh, when it was shipped to me, the box and everything in the gig bag was seven and a half pounds extraordinarily light guitar uh, the finish looks fantastic stays in tune well nut cut well I mean I really have nothing to complain about there are just a couple little things you could say might make it better but uh, 
it's fantastic. The neck, I didn't see where it actually said what the neck shape is. I would call it medium C to maybe slightly thicker. In fact, and again, this is in no way a complaint because it's a matter of personal taste because you have people that like, you know, old 50s Telecaster uh, baseball bat necks to Ibanez wizard necks. A little bit, little bit thick to be absolutely ideal for me, but still very comfortable. Uh, no problem at all playing it. Uh, I mean, it just felt great. I have not found a single defect. It was allegedly a B stock, but uh, couldn't convince me. Uh, I can't remember if I said it earlier in the video. The last time, the only other time I've ordered a guitar from Pro Audio Star, it came. Uh, it was a Squire, and it came with a big gash right here that it got in shipping. And they were kind enough to give me a pretty generous uh, refund to get it repaired. Uh, but no issue with that this time. It did only come in the Sterling Music Man box you saw at the beginning. It had no extra exterior box, but in the gig bag, it came fine. There were no issues, and again, you don't want to say too much based on one experience, but they took care of me when I did have an issue. Um, I love St. Vincent. I have for many years, as I've uh, re just releasing this, her new song, uh, Broken Man just came out. It's fantastic. I'm looking forward to her new album, All Born Screaming, coming out here in a few weeks. Um, I did a cover of her song, Smoking Section, as a lead-off track on my latest EP, Shadows of Venus. That was a lot of fun. That's a song uh, that really does mean a lot to me, and I really enjoyed covering it. And she's a tremendous artist. And again, uh, seeing Olivia Rodrigo, who I think is the... Uh, future, well, I don't want to say future anyone in particular, but one of the future faces of music, as she is already, uh, playing this, and I know that they have mutual uh, adoration for each other, and St. Vincent has spoken very highly of her. That sort of gave me the uh, push I needed to get this guitar, which this one or the previous one, again, this is the Goldie model, I've thought about, you know, for years, the previous one, and, and this one for the year or so since it's been out. And that gave me the little extra push I needed to get it. And again, to be able to get such a nice guitar at such a low price, I think is just tremendous. Um, I'd say it's definitely in the running for the best guitar under $1,000 at uh, full retail price. Again, that always comes down to a matter of taste. But especially now that some of the nicer Epiphones are uh, getting over the $1,000 mark. Uh, I'm trying to think of other things would be a contender. I don't know. If, I think they stopped making the Lazarus uh, Joe Bonamassa and the 59 Outfit Epiphone Les Paul. Those are just contenders. I actually probably like, well, I do like this one better. It's more to my taste. Another one I'd love to try. I have so many strats, I'm not sure I can justify the purchase. The 70th anniversary uh, player strat for $9.99 really appeals to me. It has some neat features. We'll see about that in the future. But I'm not saying these are direct. I'm just throwing out some names of some guitars I know that are very high quality. Of course, almost anything from the PRS SE line. So it's very hotly contested, but this stands right up there with any of them. And if you want an ultralight guitar and don't want an SG, it's a solid body. This might be your guitar. It's This is the first Sterling I've had. I could not be more impressed. Uh, definitely higher quality than a Squire. Definitely higher quality, in my opinion, than an Epiphone. Though, you know, I love those guitars. But uh, this is just a little bit higher quality. Um, I would say probably maybe a Mexican Fender quality. I would say that would be a fair comparison. Uh, the Mexican Fenders, I think, might have a little bit higher-end electronics on the inside, if I'm remembering correctly, and uh, maybe some of the finer points, but this is so unique. Uh, another guitar that I think, obviously, this would be compared to would be a Gibson slash Epiphone Firebird. I was very disappointed to see the new uh, Gibson Custom Shop inspired Epiphone Firebirds. I wasn't surprised, but disappointed they were so extremely expensive. I'd love to get the standard Firebird, 
Uh, maybe that might be something in the future to get that one and compare it to this guitar. Uh, since they do share a lot in common, as these are uh, Firebird pickups and many humbuckers aren't exactly the same thing, but they're similar. And this is definitely a reminiscent shape while still very much being its own thing. And that's another thing. It's great to, for someone who loves Strats and Tellys and Les Pauls and SGs, it's nice to play something different. I said that about the, uh, the great Guild Surfliner Deluxe last year, which is probably my favorite guitar of last year, which I left that one out. That one would be up there. Yeah, that would be a tough one. That Guild's tough to beat. But it would definitely be in the running. So, actually, I would say those would be my two top picks under $1,000. And I mean, it's just, just a fantastic guitar. You just really love when you get something and it you're excited about it and it not just meets your expectations, but exceeds them. Um, I'm gonna put the link to the 60 cycle hum video uh, about this very guitar and this very color from when it first came out last year. And uh, again, I believe that this will be coming out on International Women's Day and I'm happy to be able to pay a small tribute to uh, a couple of my very favorite female artists by d demoing and reviewing this guitar. It's, uh, it's just a, for anyone, anyone, female, male, extraterrestrial, for anyone, this is a great guitar. So uh, I'll wrap up with that. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave them below or any comments, please like and subscribe. And until next time. Keep on rocking.